My name is Terry Reeves, and I have a really soft spot in my heart for Carolina Breast Friends. I have had the pleasure, and I mean real pleasure, to get to know some of you guys um, even more than just through these Zoom presentations, and my life has been enriched as a result of it. So what started off as a dance journey has ended up being much more significant to me, and I get to be on the board and get to maybe in some way put my fingerprints on um, helping Carolina Breast Friends continue to do beautiful work um, in the lives of people like you. And this past three months has been a great opportunity to do what I love to do, and that's to present in, in and around the area of self-awareness and personal empowerment. I am big into self-care, and you'll see that inter integrated actually in the presentation tonight. And resiliency is um, your new superpower. And my hope is that you gain um, insight tonight and you leave informed and inspired to maybe make some changes that can enhance um, your overall well being. I'm gonna move us into the PowerPoint slide, and it is a little dense in terms of information on the front end because I wanna lay framework, but we will small group breakouts. So I'm going to shift us to presentation view and I'm going to pull up my little PowerPoint slide and we will be off to the races. So we have got um, the ability to get a head start on where we're going by first looking at the roadmap of what I call learning objectives. And you kind of look at um, what is resiliency and how does it impact you? So we're going to just lay some framework around that. The second piece is examine qualities that lead to improved resiliency and identify through this process how many of these qualities are well-developed and maybe some that might need more development. So I love providing information that gives you a baseline on where you are in the grand scheme. And beyond just that self-awareness, I think to move stuff into action requires the ability to show how this information can be translated and applied to your life. So my hope is we'll do some practical um, learning together so that you truly can leave with your superpower, resiliency improved. I love visuals. If you've been in my presentations in the past, I think a picture is worth a thousand words and there's not one person up here by themselves. They are standing in a coalition, if you will, like-minded people together, not one person independently trying to move through life on their own. And that is what I hope that we leave tonight knowing that um, we're in this together. The benefits. So why in the world am I even paying attention to resiliency? Well, we know resilient people have, um, and research supports all this, have a healthier life and they tend to live longer. Resilient people have lower anxiety and depression, have higher self-esteem, a stronger sense of purpose, more productive, tend to be able to hold focus longer, greater coping skills. And we can certainly all use that these day in this day and age increased life satisfaction, healthier relationships, stronger immune system, ability, um, and this is, this, this is the ability to adapt and rebound easier. And some of the promotional stuff that went out is, you know, why do some people snap and other people are able to snap back? So we'll get underneath that iceberg and, and see what's underneath that one because it's, it's pretty powerful. There tends to be this ability to be more open-minded so I use open to new possibilities, uh, feel more in control of their lives, but yet are able to let go at the same time. It's a nice duality there. Can forgive easier, better at problem solving, can manage conflict better, see a positive path forward. So be able to envision a future state that has um, some hope to it. Greater sense of hope. Um, there is this sense of being able to trust yourself and others and resilient people are more optimistic and grateful. So if you had a question of why resiliency is important, hopefully that has been identified for you and the eight measures of resiliency and research supports these eight traits 
And as I'm going around, and I'm going to go into more detail as we push forward in the presentation, but just to kind of give you a mental framework or structure around what resilient people have in common. So resilient people are more self-aware. They have the ability to self-regulate. Um, there is a stronger really the stronger sense of taking care of themselves. There is something called emotional expression. There is self-supportive. Those are the positive self-talk that we'll certainly talk about a bit as we get deeper into the presentation. Optimism, a support system, and a sense of purpose. And I will um, maybe have you, and this is probably a good opportunity, if you have a cell phone, maybe snap a photo of this particular slide. And I will be reminding people of the eight traits, but while we're on this page, it would be good to click it because we might be foreshadowing here, talking in our small groups a little bit about these eight traits. So in terms of framework, and I think it's important to, to, to introduce a learning framework. And you guys have heard me talk about the 5P change model if you were in some of the previous sessions, but as a reminder, what we are, what we are deciding to do tonight is we are intentionally pausing. And that does not mean we are devoid or absence, absent of doing anything. We are intentionally pausing to process information, to share with one another, to get underneath the iceberg and to really shake things up a little bit. Look at how we are um, living our lives and maybe challenge that a little bit to see if we can create a new path forward, a plan that might enrich our lives. And in this case, how can we improve those eight? See, life's not always smooth sailing. So you have to learn to flex your resiliency muscles and deal with the pivots that life throws you. And if we move in, I'm going to keep us uh, pressing forward. I'm a big believer that unless we pause and really make that unconscious behavior conscious, then it's very difficult to course correct. So we spend a lot of time practicing the pause and looking at and under the surface so that we can create some higher and deeper level of awareness. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And I just love doing this because we don't pause enough in life. So I'm going to ask that everybody just close your eyes and breathe. And we're not going to be here for 30 minutes. It's not going to be a long meditation, but it will begin to demonstrate yet again how powerful it is just to pause and breathe, to pause and breathe. So we think about how can I create more self-awareness? Well, rather than just tell you, it's exactly what we're doing right now. We're practicing self-awareness. So beginning with that deep, deep unjai breathing, it's belly breathing, taking breath in through the nose and pushing that breath as deeply and fully through the body as you can. So as you feel the breath come in, notice where it travels in the body. And maybe this is the first time you've paused all day. And in doing so, what a beautiful gift you give yourself. As you're breathing in and out, just become more aware of the current state that you're in. How are you feeling? Dropping into your body, noticing sensation. So letting your body speak to you. That is its language. So it speaks to you in the form of sensation. And if you are up to the moment and as you're breathing, just notice how am I feeling in this moment without any judgment, just curiosity. And this breath work, as simple as it is, is incredibly powerful because it triggers a relaxation response, which allows us to be more aware. And in this awareness, we can pay greater attention to how we're feeling 
And therefore we can move with greater intention based on what we need rather than tethered to the to-do list or just taking action without being conscious. So we're creating greater sense of consciousness. Just take about three more deep breaths, flooding oxygen to the brain and the body, which is incredibly healthy. And just taking forward that this is at your disposal 24 seven. Don't need to put on any tennis shoes or break a sweat or pay a lot of money. You can just pause and breathe. And this is one of the most important components of resiliency. The foundation starts with awareness. So I'm gonna invite you to take a couple of more breaths and maybe write down how you feel and in thinking about how you could take this one gift of self-awareness forward with you. And, you know, just think about why would that be important? How could this inform decisions? And I lean into this one a little bit longer because it's, it's the foundation of where everything else is built from. The worldwide protests against police brutality. I hear a police brutality um, show in the background, just so somebody knows if they're not muted. Well, I was born, actually. So opening Six. your eyes back up. Back ah, so do we feel better? Maybe some thumbs up, just kind of grounding ourselves because it's this world that we live in pushes us quickly. And often we don't take the, take the, these transitional moments just to allow ourselves to get grounded. So that ability to pause and become aware is at the centerpiece of any change that you want to make. It first starts with awareness, self-regulation. And we can see the slide pulled up is practicing the five P's. It's kind of a self-regulation model as well. How can I pause? How can I process how I'm feeling? How can I plan and shift my thinking? How can I move forward? How can I pivot and move forward with greater intention? So you can think about the five P's in terms of assessing where you are and being able to be internally aware, but also externally aware. And then how can I regulate so that I am not triggered? How can I develop strategies to help me self-regulate? And how can I learn to be patient with myself and others? So examples of self-regulation is mind-body connection work, which is exactly what we just did. Breathing, visualization work, yoga, exercise, taking a walk out in nature, just taking a break to pause and walk away for a few minutes and to come back after you have sort of decompressed. There is this great, um, it's just such a, a fabulous tool to use. When we're in the heat of the moment, we're often triggered and that makes us fire in a more reactionary way. So sometimes just walking away and I call it going up to the balcony and then being a witness to our own behavior, a witness to what we're feeling and meeting ourselves with kindness and meeting ourselves with curiosity so that we can embrace and come back into that situation, not as triggered and we can think more logically, right? So the pausing and breathing, calms the central nervous system, we can think more clearly. So just that giving yourself permission to take a minute or two and maybe even a longer pause so that you can come back and deal with whatever it was that you were in the heat of. And that reframing is important because sometimes we don't see the forest for the trees because we're so in it. So stepping away for a moment can help us come back with a fresh set of perspective or a fresh set of lenses. The third piece of resiliency is this self-care. And we did a whole presentation on self-care. And self-care is anything that you can do for yourself that's me-focused, me-centric. And that does not in any way mean that you are um, narcissistic at all. It means you are paying attention to the most important thing on the planet, and that is your own well-being. Because if your ship is rocky or you can't breathe, put the oxygen mask on yourself 
first get everything grounded and then you can give back with greater intention to those loved ones around you because they need for you to be stable and certainly practicing self-care allows us to be calmer there's just so many benefits to taking care of yourself so making yourself a priority literally scheduling time in your day to practice self-care and to look at the barriers, just some reminders going backwards to our first presentation is what is keeping me from practicing self-care and how can I do discovery around those barriers in order to figure out how I can get around them? Certainly having an accountability buddy, doing something that is self-care oriented at the same time every day. Those are the things that can help you create more of a sustainability plan so that things become more habitual. So if we look at the people that we're spending time with, maybe picking folks that want to do the same thing that you want to do in terms of practicing self-care. That's certainly the buddy system in motion. And some things that sort of land in that bucket of self-care is what makes you happy. I mean, that's a really good litmus test on what practicing self-care means. What are those things in your life that you enjoy doing? We know that fueling your body for optimal performance, what you put into your body certainly impacts your ability to have energy. It even affects your mood. So food is really important. Rest is critical. We know that we have to not only rest our bodies, but our brains. And we need about seven hours of sleep. And I know that's not always possible, but why not set that as a goal for yourself because when we give ourselves time to repair it makes us more renewed and able to deal with the next day where we might need more resiliency so by getting plenty of sleep that's going to help us deal with life especially moments that are filled with challenges the other piece is making sure that you're moving your body and that doesn't mean training for a marathon but it means pick something you're passionate about that keeps your body active and it could be just walking around the block with a friend. Then you get out in nature. You're getting so much um, benefit just doing something simple as walking around the block with a friend. Taking time, and I know many of you know the value of proactive care, going to the doctor, listening to the doctor's advice, making sure that you are following protocol as it relates to your health and well-being. So those are some primary tenets that you can think about that'll help you remember what you need to do in that bucket of self-care. Emotional expression. So this one I love because noticing um, how your emotions are showing up in your physical body. So if you get up in the morning and you notice if you feel tired, if you feel anxious, if you're feeling um, your heart rate es escalate, you feel a knot in your stomach, you're twisting your hair, you're fidgeting, right? All of these signals can let you know that there's something that is going on that you might want to do a little bit more discovery under. It's great to be able to name your emotions. And I find this fascinating because we tend to think about our, our emotions as on or off, left or right, yes or no, sad or happy. But if we can think about our emotions as a kaleidoscope, that there's so many variables that are happening emotionally inside of us. So we might be happy. So what does happy mean? Adding more words around happiness. How is that word landing in your body? If it's stress, what are other words that you can better describe what stress means to you and how that is showing up in the moment for you? And then begin to look at framing it up in terms of severity, because sometimes we can feel anxious and we lay this blanketed statement, I feel anxious today. But if we can kind of figure out what's going on, on underneath that anxiety and put some more words around it, it helps us to be able to manage it better. Being able to process and express your feelings. And we've talked about this a lot. I'm sure we know that when we keep things bottled up and we don't express it, it's almost like that pressure cooker. And sometimes when we hold it too long, it can be that explosion, that shh, and we can blow. So the ability to be aware of how you're feeling, to put words around your emotions, and then to be able to understand what might be driving that anxiety and to not go it alone to be able to express yourself is incredibly healthy. And this is where, you know, having a trusted friend, being able to reach out to someone 
and not for them to fix anything, right? It's not always putting that pressure on someone to fix something, but just bearing witness, holding sacred space for somebody to share. And that's a great thing, not only to be able to receive, but to also give back to someone else. So giving yourself grace, compassion is critical in this world of resiliency. So this self-supportive, be aware of that inner critic. What are the stories we're telling ourselves? What are the what are the stories that ruminate over and over again in our minds? What is happening and is it the truth? And so first we think back on awareness. How can I become more aware of my thoughts? And how can I go to the balcony and be a witness to my thoughts? And how can I get underneath the iceberg to identify where are those thoughts coming from? And how might I journal? How might I reach out to a trusted friend to shed light on some of the things that are going on inside so that I can reframe, I can change the story, I can get a positive, um, a positive new vision of the future state? How can I rewrite this? Because this practicing of positive self-talk, it's hard to just move into this, let me have a, a, a mantra about you know, today is going to be wonderful and I'm grateful. And those mantras are fabulous, but we first have to face those pieces of ourselves that tend to be the committee that's not so supportive in our heads, that inner critic. So how can I make friends with that inner critic? How can I do more discovery? How can I help that inner critic begin to change their vocabulary so that I'm saying kinder things to myself? And this, um, would you say scenario, and I think this is a really great tool. So I'm going to land on this just a little bit longer. And it is normal to make mistakes. I own it and I will grow from this situation. I will do my best because my best is good enough. I can always try again. And these are just examples of taking something that may be challenging that you are ruminating in your mind and it's allowing you to hold in some cases two truths when things don't go right it is important to learn and grow when i don't succeed i will view failure as an important part of the journey to success i am struggling this is really hard on me right now but i am grateful for my support system and i know i'm strong and will get through this I can acknowledge and pay attention to my emotions, not fear them or be hostage, but strengthened by that awareness. I am fearful of what things might look like in the future, right? It is okay to acknowledge fear. With more time, collaboration, and innovation, I will figure out how to navigate the days ahead. And this last one, I feel like I'm not doing enough. So these, we probably have our own <laughs> recordings that aren't so kind. And to be able to hold two truths, I feel like I'm not doing enough. And I'm doing what I can in this moment. I'm doing the things I can control and that is good enough. So rather than just saying you need to have this positive mantra and you need to say nice things to yourself, it's important to know that you can acknowledge the truth, right? To hold two truths, but also to hold hope to see a different alternative. So it's not an either or, it's a both and. So beginning to broaden your perspective so that the conversations that you have in your head are healthier and kinder. Optimism. And we're pulling around the circle. We are looking at how can I become more optimistic? So positive thinking, believe a positive outcome is possible and believe that you have the tools and resources to solve and manage the problem. And that's called self-efficacy. And we have all been through challenges and we've all learned through challenges and we're going to meet more challenges in the future. So when we feel that boulder in the road, rather than getting stuck, how can I train my brain to look at it like just another boulder that I have to navigate around. I've done it in the past, and so I can do it again. So this ability to practice positive thinking, envisioning a future state 
that is better than the one that you're living in. And knowing that you've done it in the past, you've gotten around these barriers, you've dealt with challenges and you can do it again. And you don't have to go it alone. So this ability to be optimistic doesn't mean to be Pollyanna or living in a world that's not reality, but rather dealing with the challenges, looking at the boulder and staring it in the face, but also knowing that you have what it takes to get around the boulder because you've done it before and you don't have to go it alone. Support system, which is exactly what going it not alone looks like. So resiliency may give us the illusion that putting the armor on and stepping forward into your power all by yourself is what resilient people do, but that's actually not the reality at all. Resilient people ask for help. They cultivate a circle of trust. And I know in the pink house, there is such great bonding through the mentoring programs and these programs that we do to pull like-minded people together to create this tribe in advance, right? Creating a tribe because we are going to need our tribe and having those people around us so that when we need to reach out, they're there, right? They're there and there's trust already created. So not viewing reaching out for help as weakness, but rather a critical component needed to, re to create stronger resiliency muscles. And I, I love this. We, we've mentioned it in the past sessions is, not just picking up the phone and calling one person. Sometimes we need to call them the Calvary and you know who your Calvary is. And if you don't know who they are, I would encourage you to pause, become aware, right? Process who those people might be and invite them into your circle of trust because they're going to be critical. Critical, especially when you hit the icebergs in life that you need to dig a little deeper and need a little bit more support to get around. So sense of purpose, how can I find my sense of purpose? Well, I would say one compass for purpose is to say, how are you spending your time and energy? How are you giving back in a way that is meaningful? How are you being of service? What are the things that bring you joy? What are the things that you're doing that give you this great sense of happiness or contentment? And if the time and energy that you're spending in life is not aligning with those things, then I would so invite you to become more aware of what's missing. What's missing in my life? What are the things that I could plug into that allow me to give back my gifts and my talents? And what are things that I can do that make me feel part of something bigger than myself? Because we are all unique, amazing people. And we have only 24 hours in the day. So how can we live a life with greater intention? And we kind of look at the resiliency wheel and the eight traits. And those are certainly things that we can think about what I can do more of in order to build those resiliency traits. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, this sense of purpose is so incredibly powerful. And so how can you use the gifts and talents that you've been given to give back? But at the same time, how can you practice self-care so you don't give it all away and then you land empty. So as givers and certainly people who want to affirm, and I get a strong sense from this group that we have um, these big hearts, these servant hearts that, that want to give. So in all of this finding a purpose and giving back and being of service, make sure that you're also being of service to yourself. And it goes back to self-care and not going it alone. So I'm going to pull us out of this um, PowerPoint slide so I can see your fabulous faces. And this, um, I keep referring to the iceberg because often what is at the tip is what is visible. But that unconscious part of the iceberg, the big part of the iceberg is underneath the surface. So we've got to dive deeper in order to do discovery so that we can figure out what are the things that I might want to change in my life. Who are the people that I want to invite into my life? What are the things that I want to do with my time and energy? And in this case tonight, looking at that resiliency wheel, what are the things that I can do to become more resilient? Because certainly that will improve the quality of your life. That first slide, why resiliency is important, many reasons why. So our very first breakout session, and this is why I asked you to take a picture of the wheel, and I'm going to type these questions in um, the chat box and I'm gonna pull us out and we're just gonna talk for a second. And um, 
That was my densely rich information sharing section of the presentation, which is not my favorite, but I wanted to create some framework because it's hard to think about becoming more resilient if you've not been given framework or an understanding of the things that create greater resiliency. So hopefully that put it in some buckets so that it's more manageable in our brains to figure out what it is we might want to do to change. So I may just ask, are we feeling good? Was that like a raise of hands? Or we, we're, we're tracking, I'm not losing you. I know I, I, these longer dives into the PowerPoint, I'm like, ooh, they're going to get Zoom fatigue and I don't want you to. Stay engaged, I promise. We're going to start talking a little bit more. So when we think about this first breakout session, and I'm going to probably put us, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. I'm going to probably break us into two breakout sessions. And what I'd like for us to um, think about is which area do you feel is the strongest? So that's why I had you take a picture of the wheel and this self-awareness as I was going through the eight components, where do you find that you're the strongest? And the reason I ask you to land in the strength first is because that builds self-efficacy, right? It lets us know that we are good at something. So I want to move us into an abundant mindset at first and where we're good at something, we can now become good at something else, right? And juxtaposition to that question is where might I be less developed? What in that wheel might I want to practice more? So that's an important question, right? Because we don't know where we want to go unless we know where we are, where are we good? And then where do we need development? And in that development, which one are you intrinsically motivated to really work on? Which one really touched your heart when I was going around the wheel that that's an area that you want to focus on. And if you're a high achiever, don't, don't pick seven, just pick one, just one, tackle one at a time, get another victory, and then keep layering in. And the other is I'd like for you as you're in your group to give examples of ways you're practicing resiliency in the areas that you selected. So that's going to be important because you can now share what are you doing in that area that is really highly developed because in sharing with like-minded people what you're doing well, we can give each other a lot of good ideas, a lot of good ideas, right? And then bundled in this, bundled in this is what might we do to build more resiliency? And I want your group to come up with a list of maybe five things, five things that your group has decided together which which things can we do to build more resiliency? So that's going to be a collaborative effort, five things that you can do. And so we've got where am I well-developed in the eight traits? Where do I um, feel that I am less developed and really want to work on? Just pick one. And then as a group, just come up with five things that you feel would be um, really important to share with the larger group when we come back in terms of encouraging one another to make resiliency important. Is maybe have um, somebody who is willing to share for your group what um, the group has come up with so far. And then for the folks who didn't get to talk, we'll engage you and we wanna hear from you and you can add to the conversation. So that way, um, whoever, elected themselves or was voluntold to report for the group, if the one of the groups will just volunteer to go first and kind of just share what, what did you discover in your session and, and what stuff can you share back with us? Well, we'll go first with group number two. Okay. And um, we didn't really get past question number one. We, um, <laughs> We were enjoying talking with each other and kind of getting to know each other a little bit. And um, so, and I hope we got question number one correct. Uh, we, we decided that we didn't see it in the chat. It didn't come across in the chat. So we were thinking the question number one was, which of the eight areas of resiliency are we, do we feel that we're most well-developed in? Is that close? Okay, good. Got it. That is spot on. Okay, good. That We were hoping that was right. And so um, Diane gave a great answer that um, she's been, really been working hard on self-regulation and knowing what her triggers 
are and developing plans um, of how to handling things, of how, of how to handle things when she feels like a trigger is coming on. And she's been spending a lot of time working on that. So I thought that was a great one. And um, Juliana has a, um, feels like a sense of purpose is her strongest, uh, most well-developed trait. She's a registered nurse and she's really good at taking care of everyone else. Um, and she's looking at retirement in the next few months. And so wow. she realizes that's going to change and she'll have a bit of a, an adjustment with that. And um, so that's about how far we got. Well, that, that was, those were two very powerful things. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's interesting um, when we can look at, right, the things that are well-developed, that's a reminder to keep doing those things. And it's also a good reminder that we were able to develop that trait and where we may not be as well developed. And and I will probably open that up to the, to the group is where there's opportunity, where there's opportunity. And Juliana kind of mentioned her purpose is giving back, right? Being of service, caretaking, and being a nurse is a very high calling of serving others. And, you know, what might be the opposite of that is how well am I serving myself? just as an example. And so where we can figure out how we can balance that purpose sometimes so that we are taking care so that we stay refueled, recharged and re-inspired every day to be able to go out there and do it again, right? To go out there and do it again. So that self-care piece kind of enters into the equation. Sometimes with us folks who like to give a whole lot. Um, Ann Nelson. So um, how about group number two? Who is willing to share from that group? We were two, actually. So it would be group number one. Group one. Yes, the other group. Yes. Thank you, Leslie. Leanne, did you want to where you were kind of leading the group? (laughs) Hold on just a minute. I was looking at that. Oh, gosh. I Well, I... I didn't take very good notes. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was the voluntold. <laughs> oh, I, I was impressed. You fooled me. Yeah, I was going to say, because Leanne was the driving force to push us all through this. So yeah. that's right. We I might, mean, I, we I scribbled down a few things, but I mean, you did an impressive job, Leanne. So do you oh, want to well, run with it? Oh my gosh. Well, why don't we do it as a group? Because I'm trying to remember. Um, I will, I, mm, um, I'm trying to remember why don't we each say what we thought we were doing well at and uh, what area we thought we were doing well. I, I said that I thought the support system was where I was doing well and reaching out and making sure I had my, my tribe, as you said, and I'm trying to remember Denise, what were you saying was yours? I I said that was, I'm getting better at that. So I think Mm -hmm. I'm a little more well-developed at that. And I was mentioning about in and, uh, and watching the yoga session two last night and, you know, then signing up for yoga and I'd done yoga before, before the pandemic and stuff, but, and cancer and stuff, but I was just like, it's not my favorite thing, but you know, a tribe can propel you forward to do things that, you know, you may enjoy now. I may not have enjoyed it before as much. Um, but, uh, and then I was doing good with that kind of self-care thing, but There's plenty of other things that I, whether it be a sense of purpose, self-regulation that I need to work on plenty. Right. And, and you were saying it was self-care was right for you, right? Right now. Well, I, thanks to uh, Terry's class, the last one we had in March or in March, I, um, you know, and after a few doctor appointments, it was like, all right, having a reality check that I should have had 40 years ago, but (laughs) better late than never, um, but never too late. But uh, just really trying to uh, be mindful about that self-care piece. And uh, as a result, I'm, I'm feeling positive and see results since then. So uh, I would say that one I'm trying to hone in on. And uh, as far as the less developed, I, I'll tell you, I feel like I'm such a work in progress. Each one of them I could, could tap yeah. into. We, we definitely I can relate. That. We said yeah. that as a group, like Pam, Pam, who either is on or had to get off. I'm not sure where she is on that. But um, she was saying that typically she would have said support system was where she was strong. But she feels like lately that's gotten out of balance for her. And she really felt like she was kind of 
feeling, you know, not like any one of the eight was just a sure thing for her right now. And she kind of, you know, and we all said COVID's probably gotten us all a little bit disconnected with our tribe, you know, um, feeling less connected and, um, you know, maybe less active, you know, which is the self-care. My, you know, they talk about COVID insomnia, not sleeping well. So anyway, uh, yeah. we, we definitely felt like that was part, part of the whole challenge. I love okay. that. Mary, I, I have a question. Uh, Mary, my name is yeah. Agnes. This is my first time coming, but this might sound real silly. Now, when you say tribe, do you mean the whole group of people? I All love you. your question. So when I refer to tribe, um, it means your support group, the people that yeah. are in your center okay. of trust. It could be friends, family. It could be the combination of the two. So just making sure there are people around you that if you're in a foxhole by yourself, taken on shrapnel of life, right? That you can turn and feel like somebody's got your back, that you can reach out and they're going to support you and hold your hand and get you through it. And so just knowing who your tribe is, because we need them often and always, and, uh, and being able to reach out and, and know that somebody's there for you and, uh, and using your tribe, not just knowing they're there, but using your tribe. Right. And that's sometimes the, the tough part, the tough part. Exactly. Yes. Great question. And glad to have you tonight. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I'm learning a lot already. Good, good. Mm -hmm. So with the group, I know um, group two, Leslie, y'all were, y'all moved through things a little slower. Um, <laughs> because of me. No, no, it's, a, no, no, no. it's, <laughs> hey, being in, being in community and just talking about things that are on your heart whether you get through all of it or not is a powerful experience. So I never am this uh, person who's, we've got to get through all three and we're on this task to get to the end. It's really enjoying the process of communication. So I try not to push people really quickly to the finish line because part of the journey is really where a lot of the growth occurs. And sometimes you can't do that super fast because you miss, you miss those deeper conversations that might pause us in a place a little longer. So um, really important to remember. So I'm going to bounce us back and forth between the two groups, um, maybe um, to the group. And, and Leslie, since your group didn't talk a lot, when we think about maybe the less developed, um, if you guys in this discovery of these eight components, is there something that was less developed? And so maybe your group could just each share what is less developed. Um, and maybe that could be a declaration of awareness and perhaps an area that you might consider, right? Consider taking some action. And so if your group would each just state, and if you haven't figured it out yet, you can pass, right? You're still pondering, but I'd love to hear that from the group and to start, Leslie, with your group, and maybe you could kick us off. Okay. Um, so you want me to mention the one that I think that I'm probably, that I need to work on the most. Okay. Um, well, I'm a nurse too. And so nurses tend to think about everybody else first and then themselves second. Um, so... I'm always trying to work on self-care um, and, and remembering to remember myself um, and self-regulation. My sleep patterns have been so discombobulated during COVID and working from home and, um, you know, I stay up too late and I, so, you know, working on those things so that I can get my seven hours of sleep a night and be on a better schedule. So that's, that's what I need to work on the most. I love that. So maybe just jump in. I don't necessarily think we need to go um, from just all group one to group two or vice versa. Maybe just jump in and that probably will be more efficient. So if you feel like sharing, I'd love to hear your declaration of what you'd like to work on. Um. It's me again. <laughs> <laughs> we're, gl we're glad. We're glad okay. that it's you again. Ag Agnes, Not, we're, um, Agnes, we're your tribe. <laughs> we're your tribe. Yes. We're your tribe, yes. babe. You're going to support me, and I'm trying to get 
gained all the knowledge I can get tonight. So I think mine is emotional expression. Mm -hmm. And if I understand that right, yes. it's like, um, I like people, I'm a people person. But so when somebody backstabs me for no reason, that really hurts me, that hurts my emotions. So is that natural or is that something that I need to work on myself first? I don't know what it is. Well, it's very important if something hurts your feelings to acknowledge that, right? And to be able to pause and, you know, I always encourage people, if somebody means a lot to you and they're important to you in your life, we have conflict with those people sometimes. And if someone shares or says something, says or acts in a certain way that hurts you, it's important to share that um, with them, but to do it with curiosity, right? Because sometimes we will make assumptions and we will assume <clears throat> that somebody meant to hurt us. And so rather than immediately assume the worst, it's such a great way to seek mutual understanding and to ask somebody, say, hey, this is what you said to me. It really hurt my feelings. And I'd love to talk about it with you. I want to understand where you are coming from. And often people aren't aware of their behavior and how it affects another person. So it's important for you to own how you feel and to stand up for yourself and express that from a place of respect. So you're not ready to fight, but you're curious. And you, you are seeking in that conversation an understanding of perhaps why that person said or did something. And honestly, Agnes, if someone can't meet you in that place and they stay really aggressive or continue to say things that are not healthy, then that may be a bigger consideration as it relates to that friendship or that relationship. Is it a healthy one to stay in? I mean, so it's, it's a tricky, that's a tricky one, because sometimes the people that we love the most can sometimes hurt us the most, but it is very important that you not shove, and I would just encourage you to really feel your emotions and get underneath them and question them, and whoever is involved in that um, with you have these open, heartfelt conversations, right, to inquire. So that would be my best advice, really, just with conflict resolution in general, is not to seek to fight, but to seek to find mutual understanding. And often we can, um, when we meet ourselves with that kind of grace and compassion, it creates what I would consider more of a, um, a bridge than a drawbridge. It's a bridge that comes together. Does that help you a little bit? It's about this this one person that doesn't communicate after called her <clears throat> i've texted her and just doesn't respond back yeah and then i will be meeting her we, we meet every six weeks to do volunteer work in the church yeah. so i don't know how to confront not confront her but just talk to her about this yeah why I, she's think, not. I think you're just um clear and direct with her and not afraid of saying hey i've reached out to you a couple of times and i i, I don't want to make any assumptions but you're a friend of mine and, and, you know, I want to know what's going on. Can you tell me, you know, is there a better way for us to communicate? It's important to me, your friendship. And, I, and I'd love to, you know, talk to you more and your non-responsiveness. It, it's making me feel bad. And, and I don't want to assume that that's intentional. So I just wanted to ask you. So being able to have those direct conversations, you know, without judgment, right? More curiosity, more curiosity. So, you know leading with compassion and curiosity mm -hmm. would be some, and, and you and I can talk about it a little bit more offline too. If, if you want to have a conversation with me independent of this, this larger group, I'll be more than, than glad to talk with you a little bit oh, more. Thank you so much. You're welcome so much. So how about, <laughs> how about the rest of the group? What's, what's happening in the world of your um, less developed and want to become more proficient trait? Well, I'll add in something just real quick. I was uh, on your emotional, I tend to think I'm emotionally, well, I don't know, expressive, whatever. Um, but what I was, when I looked at the one slide, the thing that spoke to me about, I'm just trying to pull it up here, the emotional expression, 
notice how your emotions show up physically. And it's funny because I tend to, I hate being on all the drugs I'm on. It's annoying to me. I tend to then blame it on those. Well, that makes me feel this. So that gives me, you know, the cancer drug gives me hot flashes. So it makes me cranky. The thyroid thing that I'm on now, the new one, it does this, my hair's falling out, blah, 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 you know, but I really don't connect that up with when I wake up in the morning, are those emotions about that? Or are they really about something else? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I just need to be more aware and not blame, play the blame game on other things because then it kind of gives away my control over that. Yeah. Wow. And so Mm -hmm. I I'm trying to, yeah, feel, you know, powerful, but that, that kind of spoke to me to kind of, because I'm not one to like name emotions or name, you know, it's like, just pull your bootstraps up and get moving and, you know, and be grateful. And I'm great at being grateful, even if I don't feel like being grateful, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, you know, but uh, I really do think that I tend to kind of give away that control and blame, blame these other, you know, things that I say I can't control, but I can control my response. And I know that intellectually, but it's that emotional connection. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the, that's the interesting thing is, is constructs, right? Awareness first starts in the mind because our mind influences every single thing we choose to do in life. And so often we know what we're supposed to do, but how do we integrate? How do we adopt that behavior so that we actually take that new knowledge forward? And our body is such a vehicle of information. And so to marry up what we're thinking with how we're feeling in our heart and physically in our bodies is just such a great place to live because there's more awareness, more data, more information that can really move us forward with greater intention. And I think sometimes, you know, when we get locked up here, we can do the yes or no, black or white, you know, in or out. And it becomes very rigid thinking where if we really open up, there's more information to guide us. And, um, and we have all the answers inside. It's just, how do we tap in? How do we tap in? And so Denise, thank you for sharing that. That that's powerful. And I hope that that's an aha for you um, so that you regain control. You know, we got to let go of the uncontrollables because there's a lot in life that we need to just cut her loose because I don't want to be carrying baggage that makes me heavier than I need to be. Right. But then what are the things that I can bring back control in and, and not feel like it's got to be all of it. What can I let go and what can I hang on to that truly is important. Yeah. So, yeah. so how about we got a couple of more people I'd love to hear from you and, um, and, you know, feel free to share. If not, I understand just want to check time too, but I'd love to hear a couple of more folks share and then we'll, kind of wrap her up. So Terry, I think mine is definitely optimism. Is that the one you want to work on? Just staying positive, having a positive outlook. I've been working on the reaction, you know, when, when things, when bad things happen and not that a lot of bad things happen, but when things happen, walking away, the breathing, the mindfulness, but it's the staying positive, the staying optimistic, the being good in everything that I'm just having such a hard time with, especially with the world right now. Yeah. It's right. so easy to go down that slippery slope and just be negative and I want to be negative. I don't want to be a negative Nelly at all. <laughs> so this is such a, um, a, such an interesting intersection, right? Because we are, you know, we're dealing with diagnosis, we're dealing with treatment, we're dealing with COVID, we're dealing with a lot of other things, right? So Mm -hmm. that's a lot to carry. And, you know, I used to think optimism was to have a vision for a future state that's brighter than the one that I'm in, and I need to put one foot in front of the other, and I need to put blinders on, and I need to find the silver lining, and I need to, you know, (laughs) suck it up and and push forward. And and that was my... um, my less developed view of resiliency, right? My more Mm -hmm. developed view of it now is to first pause and have compassion and to acknowledge that it is a, and I'll use one bad word tonight, it is a shitty day or something (laughs) is just not going well. 
And to be able to hold two truths, because our brain is so multifaceted and it's so okay to know that the situation or the dynamic that's occurring is really bad. But to be able to hold two truths leaves space for optimism and not this Pollyanna thinking, right? So to be able to say, these things occurred today, whatever they might be. And I came home and feel exhausted. And I can't believe like this black cloud followed me. And one thing after the next has just been <laughs> icky. And then you get home and you take a deep breath, like you said, and breathe and go, okay, I'm acknowledging the facts, but I also know that I can get through it. I've been through this rodeo before. I got a tribe. I know what to do to practice self-care. I know not to shove these feelings inside and ignore them. I need to just give myself some grace, right? Cry, mm -hmm. breathe, call somebody and acknowledge the truth, but also hold hope as a container that is underneath that and, and is more powerful than mm -hmm. the disruption, right? So I hope that kind of visual or, or that holding two truths can bring some, some duality and that those things can be happening simultaneously. Right. Make sense. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so I think I'm, I thought I might've heard another person that was going to chime in. So I, I'd like to make sure if anybody else wants to share, I'm not, um, not uh, closing us down too early. Oh, I was going to, yeah. Uh, hi, Terry. Hi, I'm so hi, glad hi. you're on the call. <laughs> yeah, how Talk are about you? a yoga mama. I know her daughter yeah. and um, she's got some grandbabies that I think are going to keep her kind of busy. I, they are. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to have Bridget take care of me after I retire. That's my big plan. But but I would have to, it, it was so interesting just reflecting on the last you know year since my diagnosis with breast cancer and um, then, then looking at, you know, the wheel and the different components of that. And <clears throat> this is some, um, one of the components that's really evolving, continuing to evolve for me. And I, it was really um, kind of an unintended, um, I don't want to, I guess, benefit of my cancer was I did develop a tribe. And I mean, of course, I have my own little family here that's very supportive, but I've never been, um, I'm an only, I'm an only girl, I have brothers. So I never really um, made a lot of close girlfriends. And, but now I've kind of had to, because, you know, I, talking to my brother about my breast cancer isn't really, he doesn't want to know all the details. My husband doesn't want all the details. My daughter kind of does. But so in my nursing role, I've had to, I, I, um, I am in an office and um, when I'm out of the office, I have to have somebody to cover for me. I'm there by myself. So I have people cover for me remotely. So that meant I had to reach out to some people and say, Hey, you know, I mean, I control the information. I didn't have to tell them everything, but I said, you know, these are, these are my colleagues. I've known them a long time. I need to share with them. So I did, this is going on with me and I'm going to go do this. And I, I really have developed some really deep friendships with people over the last year. So that's been so wonderful. And then the other day um, I had my, I had my tissue expander put back in three weeks ago the last time it got infected so it had to come out so but yesterday I went and got it filled and I'm like oh my gosh I have a bump and then this morning I um, got in the office and I called my friend in DC and I just said you're the first person I'm telling about this because I know you've been praying for me Aww. that you know that my that I got beyond the two week point. So I thought, God, I really do. I have good friends and it was so nice. So I'm really happy about that. Um, and I do want to continue to develop that, even though I'm going to retire and leave that, you know, I, I'll, I still have their phone numbers. I won't be working with them anymore, but I thought, well, that was really um, a wonderful thing that happened. All these other things on the wheel, I got to work on all of them. I know that <laughs> like that self-care thing. <laughs> I'm bad at that, uh, and, you know, and the, and the whole, you know, like Denise, you were saying the medicines, you know, the letrozole is, I mean, it's not horrible, but boy, 
you know, it's just not my favorite thing to take, but what, you know, somebody, a doctor said to me, well, you have a choice. I'm like, oh, shut up. You know, you don't, <laughs> you, okay. What's the choice guy? Or it was a female. I'm like, really? You know, okay. Yeah. I could not take it and then I'll be sorry. So, you know, a little compassion, but anyways, I have to work on all those other things, but, um, I'm, I'm going to stick with my tribe and I'm going to keep developing them. So it's really a nice thing. And this is such a nice group too. So I hope I can attend other events. It's really nice. Good. Mm, so glad to hear you share that. Thank you. And what reinforcement, right? To all of us, a reminder of the power of having, you know, support around you and the importance. Mary, were you going to say something? I thought you were piping in a second ago. Me? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was. I especially, I love your thing about recognizing two truths, because the thing I've become pretty good at going through this whole journey is, is, is awareness in, in kind of really looking at how I'm feeling and figuring out it's not because I'm mad because I can't get out today. It's because I'm afraid because I have to have this biopsy, which I did or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and people around me are saying, Oh, don't be afraid. You know, don't, don't, that's okay. You don't, you can just, you know, think positively. When I was going through my chemotherapy and radiation, if one more person had come up to me and said, you'll be fine as long as you just keep thinking positively, I think I was ready to punch them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they met so well, but it's not that simple. And yet I have a tendency to believe other people when they say, I, I, they, they make me feel like I'm not doing what I should be doing to deal better with we're, we're going through a lot of changes now a lot of life decisions that involves a big move and and um and and i i know the things to do but they don't necessarily they don't make the problems go away and pretending to not care or to be happy about it doesn't work mm -hmm. and and so I, that's the thing I need to work on is having more confidence in my ability to make it through the hard things instead of criticizing myself for not being able to just get over them. Yeah. That's, and your, your real, realism has really helped, helped to reinforce that with me because I don't always get reinforcement for that. Thank you, Mary. And I, Thank you. And to articulate that out loud is being vulnerable, but you're also hearing your own voice and recognizing how important it is for you to step into your power and trust yourself, really trust yourself. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to have been able to spend, you know, these sessions with you because I know you've been very engaged and, and that means a lot. And I'm glad that you're pulling some information that is going to be meaningful for you. Makes me happy really does. Trust yourself. Trust, trust, trust. So Miss Ann Nelson, we have not heard one word from you and you <laughs> always have such powerful things to say. Well, I, uh, I definitely feel like the emotional expression is one area that I need to continuously work on. And I especially loved how you said, you know, give yourself the permission for grace or something to that effect. And, um, I just never really thought about it that way, but, um, I, I definitely can be hard on myself at times. And so just trying to work on, on that total picture. I have so many things to be grateful for and thankful for, and I am, but I also feel like, um, you know, different parts of my life where I try to take charge, for example, helping my sister. It's like, I came to that aha moment that I can't fix and solve every problem of the world. And, um, you know, and just accepting that, you know, there's some things we can change and some things we cannot change. And, uh, and that's just like one area that has been pretty consuming the last six months. So um, just having these sessions, Terry, just really help empower 
and, and although a work in progress and the certain areas of each eight of those bubbles, um, to know that it's never too late is just the best feeling. You know, just take one baby step at a time and keep plugging away. Agreed. Like one breath at a time, one step yeah. at a time and yeah. knowing that you don't have to take that journey alone. Right. And um, at the end of the day, having this sense of confidence that you got this and it's not an easy road to travel, but you, you got it. You have what it takes to get through it and you don't have to take the journey by yourself. And, you know, I keep coming back to self-care. I mean, mm-hmm. being able to restore each day by getting good rest and getting up the next day and pausing and checking in so that you're having compassion. You know, we wake up feeling different every day. And so that self-awareness, that inventory, the ability to pause and just kind of gain more of a compass of how your day is starting allows you to move through the day with a sense of compassion, a sense of greater awareness and, you know, in a way more control because we kind of know what's going on and what can I do to make this day not perfect because that's not a reality, but how can I choose wisely? You know, how can I, you know, make intentional decisions that are going to serve my greater good And um, when I'm showing up the best version of myself, I can show up for my family, you know, the people that really matter in my life. And that needs to start first at home base Mm because you guys, I matter, right? Um, So just such an important thing, but not something that we're taught. I mean, you know, we've, we've had these sessions before. So the reality is we are a work in progress, but this awareness is such a great gift for continual growth. Mm-hmm. and um and development and we yeah. are certainly on a journey of uh, exploration <laughs> evolution yeah. and we hit boulders and we hit crossroads but you know we can look back and know that we made it this far so that we can make it that far forward as well